WFMT 98.7 FM, Chicago, Chicago's Fine Arts Station. Barclays Bank International, now open at 208 South LaSalle Street in Chicago, the English bank with an American accent, presents on WFMT, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Tonight we have the third and final segment of The Hound of the Baskervilles. It is murder, Watson. Refined, cold-blooded, deliberate murder. Listen! My God, what's that? Where is it? The hounds! Great heavens, if we're too late! Come, Watson, come! It was a race against time, against evil, against I knew not what. In this, the most uncanny of all Sherlock Holmes cases. Watson is my name, Dr. Watson. And I shared the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And since in my excitement I may have anticipated somewhat, let me first go back and recall the chain of detection that led Holmes to this crisis. And then I will tell you what happened finally in our encounter with the Hound of the Baskerville. Martinique, Tanzania, Dubrovnik. Wherever your vacation plans take you this summer, Barclays Bank International has a special going-away present to make your travels completely free of money worries. Barclays Traveler's Checks. Barclays Traveler's Checks are the closest thing yet to an international common currency, accepted at face value throughout the world. And with over 5,000 Barclays offices around the world, all strategically located to serve you, they can easily be replaced at no cost to you should they be misplaced or stolen. Best of all, they're free at Barclays. As part of Barclays' good neighbor policy, you can get Barclays traveler's checks without paying a penny extra for commission. And when you think of all the places you plan to stay, the things you plan to do, and the things you plan to buy, that could come to quite a savings. So before you leave the country, come to Barclays for your free of commission traveler's checks. Your longest journey can begin with one short stop to Barclays Bank. 208 South LaSalle Street, Chicago, and the world. Holmes and I had come to Dartmoor to protect Sir Henry from the terrible fate which might befall him if the legend of the Baskervilles came true. But Holmes was convinced that behind it all was cold-blooded, deliberate murder by Stapleton, the apparently mild lepidopterist schoolmaster. Our nets were closing on the murderer. Even the Stapletons were closing on his victim, Sir Henry Baskerville. We were just about to leave the lonely hut where Holmes had been in hiding for all these days when... The hounds! Great heavens if we're too late! Come, Watson, come! You hear that? He's beaten us, Watson. Oh, no, surely not. Fool that I was to hold my hand, and you want it. He will come to abandoning your charge. By heaven, if the worst has happened, we'll avenge him. Come quickly, let's find him. Yes. Yes. It's Sir Henry, poor devil. Do you remember? That's the suit he wore when he first came to our rooms in Baker Street. Yes, indeed. Oh, his skull's crushed. Oh, the brute! Holmes, I shall never forgive myself. I'm more to blame than you, Watson. But how could I know that he'd risked his life on the moor in the face of all my warnings? Where's this brute of a hound that drove him to death? He may be lurking among the rocks at this very moment. Where's Stapleton? answer for this. He shall. I'll see to that. Uh, the light in his cottage. Why don't we go and seize him at once? No. 
Our case is not complete. One false move and he may escape us yet. All we can do now is to perform the last offices for our poor friend. Come on, Watson. Yes. Help me to turn him over on his well. back. And then we can... and Barrymore must have passed them on to Selden. Then the clothes have been the poor fellow's death. Oh. Obviously, the hound was laid on from some article of Sir Henry's. The boot that was stolen at the hotel? Probably. Hello, Watson. Hmm? What's this? Here's Stapleton himself by all that's wonderful and audacious. Careful now, not a word to show your suspicion. Why, Dr. Watson? Well, that's you, is it not? But dear me, what, what's this? Uh, somebody hurt? Not. Don't tell me it's our friend, Sir Henry. What a terrible... Who's this? Selden. The man who escaped from Princeton. Oh, dear me, but, uh, but how? He appears to have broken his neck by falling over these rocks. My friend and I were strolling on the moor when we heard a cry. Oh, so did I. That's what brought me out. I was uneasy about Sir Henry. Why about... Sir Henry, in particular. Because I had suggested he should come over. I see. What's your theory of this poor fellow's death, Mr. Holmes? Huh. You are quick at identification. We've been expecting you in these parts since Dr. Watson came down. You're in time to see a tragedy. Yes, indeed. I shall take an unpleasant remembrance back with me to London tomorrow. Oh, you'll return tomorrow. That is my intention. And I must return to my sister. She'll be nervous there on her own. Uh, good night, then, Mr. Holmes. Goodbye, sir. Uh, good night, Dr. Watson. Well, sir. What a nerve the fellow has. <laughs> We're at close grips at last. I'm sorry he's seen you. So was I at first, but there was no getting out of it. How will it affect him, do you think? It may make him more cautious. Or it may drive him to desperate measures. Mm -hmm. Like most clever criminals... He may be too confident and imagine he's completely deceived us. What will you do now? Come up to the hall? Yes. Yes, I see no reason for further concealment. Mm. But one last word, Watson. Say nothing of the hound to Sir Henry. Let him think Selden's death was a staple to have us believe. When we arrived, I had the unpleasant task of breaking the news of Selden's death to the Barrymore. Sir Henry raised his eyebrows when he found that Holmes had no luggage and no explanation for his absence. But between us, we soon supplied his wants and sat down to a belated supper. Sir Henry, hmm? I don't suppose you appreciate that we've been mourning over you under the impression you'd broken your neck. What's that? This poor wretch was dressed in your clothes. I fear your servant who gave them to him may be in trouble with the police. Oh. Oh, no, I, I don't think so. There was no mark on them, as far as I know. That's lucky for him. How about the case? If you can muzzle that hound and put him on a chain, I'll be ready to swear that you're the greatest detective of all time. I think I can do it. If you give me your help... I'll do whatever you tell me. Very good. I shall ask you to do it blindly, without asking the reason. Just as you like. If you'll do this, I think the chances are that... What's the matter, Holmes? Oh. I, I was admiring your family portrait. They are all family portraits, I presume. Hmm? Uh, yes, uh, every one. Barrymore's been coaching me in them. Who's the gentleman with the black velvet and the lace? Ah, that's the cause of all the mischief. The wicked Hugo, who started the Hound of the Baskervilles. We're not likely to forget him. Dear me. He seems a quiet... Meat-mannered man. But I dare say there was a lurking devil in his eyes. Well, I, I, I think we could manage another bottle of hock, don't you? Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'll go and fetch it from the cellar. I won't bother Barrymore tonight. His wife's so upset with the news about Selden. What's the name? That portrait of Hugo Baskerville. Look at it carefully. Is 
kids like anyone you know. Oh, God heavens, it's stapled. Ah, it might be his portrait. Yes, it's an interesting example of a throwback, both physical and spiritual. The fellow's a Baskerville. Clearly. With designs on the succession. Yes. We have him, Watson. We have him. <laughs> Here we are. Well, you look like a general planning a battle with his chief of staff. That's exactly the situation. Oh. Well, what are my orders? Uh, I understand uh, that tomorrow night you are engaged to dine with the Stapleton. Yes. Yes, they're, uh, they're very hospitable people. Well, thank you. I, I hope you'll come too. Oh, I'm afraid Watson and I must go to London. To, to London? Tomorrow? My dear fellow, you must trust me implicitly. Uh, tell your friends that we should have been happy to come with you, but that urgent business has called us to town. Will you give them that message? Well... If you insist, Mr. Holmes. Uh, one more direction. I want you to drive to Mary Pitt House, but send your trap back and let them know you intend to walk home. What's that, Holmes? Walk home alone across the moor? Yes. But that's the very thing you've told me not to do. This time you must. But whatever you do, stick to the path that leads from Mary Pitt House to the Grimpen Road. Don't leave that path for an instant as you value your life. Next morning, the trap took us to the station of Coombe Tracy. But instead of taking the train, Holmes inquired at the station master's office and was given a telegram. What have you got there, Holmes? Ah. Capital. Listen, Watson. Mm -hmm. Wire received. Coming down with unsigned warrant. Arrived 540. Lestrade. You've sent for Lestrade? Yes. He's the best of the professionals. I think we may need him. So we're not going to London? No. But everything depends on Sir Henry believing that we have gone. All we have to do is to keep out of the way. And I think we might well employ our time by calling on your acquaintance, Mrs. Laura Lyon. When she learns of the deception that Stapleton practiced on her, I think the result may be of interest to her. His wife? What do you mean, his wife? Mr. Stapleton is not a married man. I'm afraid you're mistaken, Mrs. Lyle. Prove it to me. Prove it to me, and if you cannot... I've come prepared to do so. Here is a photograph of the couple taken in York four years ago. Let me see. It's endorsed Mr. and Mrs. Vandeleur. Oh. oh, Mr. Holmes. Ask me what you like. I'll hold nothing back. Very well. Was the sending of the letter to Sir Charles suggested to you by Staples? He dictated it. So that you could meet the legal expenses of your divorce? Yes. And then, after you had sent the letter, he dissuaded you from keeping the appointment? Yes. He told me it would hurt his self-respect if anyone else found the money. And later, after Sir Charles's death, he made you remain silent about your appointment? He said that if I spoke, I should be suspected of murder. Well, I think on the whole you've had a very fortunate escape. You had him in your power and he knew it. And yet you're alive. <laughs> I still can't believe it. I assure you, Mrs. Lyons, for several months you've been walking on the edge of a precipice. Now I must wish you good morning. You're listening to The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, being brought to you from the BBC over WFMT in Chicago, presented by Barclays Bank International, now offering Barclays Traveler's Checks free of commission, offering no-charge checking with a $300 minimum balance, offering you always a friendly cup of tea, and if you like, for your personal checks, a cameo of Sherlock Holmes imprinted on the top left corner. Barclays Bank International at 208 South LaSalle. Yeah. 
There he is. Good evening, Miss Fred. Holmes. Good evening to you. Good evening, Lord Watson. How do you do, Lestrade? Got anything good, gentlemen? The biggest thing for years. Well, we have uh, two hours before we need think of starting. I think we might employ it in getting some dinner, don't you? Well, suits me. And then, Lestrade, we'll take the London fog out of your throat by giving you a breath of the pure night air of Dartmoor. Because I've never been on Dartmoor. Well, I don't suppose you'll forget your first visit. Oh. Come along. Now, I'll lead the way along the moor path. Right. I must ask you to walk on tiptoe and not to raise your voices. that that fog is coming up from the mire. I know Lestrade confound it. It's the one thing on earth I didn't bargain for. It's serious, Holmes? Very serious indeed. It could ruin all our plans. Oh. What's the time? Um, ten, ten o'clock. It can't be long now. His life depends on his coming out before the fog is over that path. If he isn't out in a few minutes, the path will be covered. We shan't be able to see our hands in front of us. Why doesn't he come? Ah, oh, there's the front door. He's coming now. Shh. Quiet. Here he comes. Shall we call to him? No. Have your pistols ready. What? Time. Here's a flask of brandy. Oh, thank you, Miss Trade. Oh, Here's some of this guy. Steady, steady. You're all right. Come. Oh, have a little more. Oh, my God. What was it? In heaven's name, what was it? Whatever it was, it's dead. We've laid the family ghost once and for all. Look at the size of the brute. Oh, those dreadful flames. Even now, the mouth's on fire. The eyes. Look at the eyes. Oh, don't worry. It's phosphorus. 
Look, I've got it in my fingers now. Oh, phosphorus? Yes. And a very cunning preparation of it. There's no smell to interfere with the animal's power of scent. Oh, Sir Henry, we owe you a deep apology. I was prepared for a hound, but not for such a creature as this. You saved my life. Having first in danger. What? Give me another mouthful of that brandy. Come on, here we are. That's it. Ah. Oh, that's better. That's better. Now, Come you'll on. help me up a little. Yes, right. Right. Uh, Yes, thank you. Uh, what do you propose to do now? To leave you here. Mm. You're not fit for further adventure tonight. If you wait, one or other of us will go back with you to the hall. Right. Now, we must finish our work. We have our case. We only want our man. Watson, the strayed, right. come along. Yeah. Every moment of importance to merit me part. As I thought, not a sign of him. He'll have heard our shot and escaped. Oh, it's doors locked. Keep still. Listen. Do you hear that? Stand aside and be ready to rush in. I'm going to kick this lock in. Oh, Mrs. Chaput. Oh, the poor wretch. Quick, Watson. Help me untie her. Get that gag out of her mouth. Oh. Holmes. Oh, look at that. Whiplash on her neck. The brute. Yeah, oh. madam. Sip this brandy. Has he, has he escaped? He cannot escape us, madam. My name is Sir Henry. Yes. And the hound. Dead. Thank God. Thank God. Oh, oh. See how he's treating me. I hate him. I hate him. Then help us. Tell us where we can find him. There's only one place he can have fled to. The old tin mine. Where? On an island in the heart of the mire. That's where he kept the hound, and that's where he'll be. But look at the fog. No one could find his way into Grimpen Mire tonight. Yes, he couldn't see the guy he wants tonight. What do you mean, ma'am? We planted them together to mark the pathway through the mire. I see. Oh, if only I could have plucked them out today. Then you'd have him at your mercy. Well, it's no use our going after him till the fog lifts. Lestrade, will you stay on here? Certainly, Mr. Holmes. Watson, we must take Sir Henry back to Baskerville Hall. Mrs. Stapleton, if the weather is cleared, we will call to you tomorrow morning. The next morning, Mrs. Stapleton guided Holmes, Lestrade, and myself to the edge of the bog. We left her standing on the firm, peaty soil and began to follow the small wands that showed the zigzagging path through the foul quagmire. Its grip clutched at our heels as we walked. As if some malignant hand were tugging us down. We're, we're uh, nearly there, Watson. Yeah, I think it was that, illustrate. Yeah. Give me a good firm London pavement every time. Hello? What? Uh, Look, Watson. There, there's something in the mud. Just... Just to the right there. And even you'll get caught. Look out, sir. See? See? Look at this. An old boot. Well, why risk your life for that, sir? Look at the maker's name, Watson. Yes. Myers, Toronto. Exactly. Wasn't that worth a mud bath? No, Sir Henry. Henry's missing boot. The one that was stolen from his London hotel. Stapleton must have used it to set the hound on his track and then thrown it away in his flight when he knew the game was up. You got as far as here, then? Yes. Come on. Let's see what else we can learn. But more than that, we were never destined. When we reached the firmer ground, we looked eagerly about us. There were many traces of Stapleton's habitation, the chain where the animal was kept, the bones that it gnawed, the remains even of Mortimer's poor little curly-haired sparrow, and the tin of luminous paint that had been used to make the house glow with fire. But of the man himself, no sign met our eyes. 
If the earth told a true story, then he never reached that island of refuge. Somewhere in the foul slime of Grimpenmire, this cold and cruel-hearted man is forever buried. Towards the end of November, Sir Henry Baskerville and Dr. Mortimer were in London on the first stage of a voyage round the world to calm Sir Henry's shattered nerves. They called on us one raw and foggy afternoon, and the four of us sat and talked round a cheerful fire in our sitting room in Baker Street. You know, Mr. Holmes, there are still one or two things about the case that puzzle me. I'll do my best to clarify them. Well, was Stapleton really a relative of mine? Oh, yes, beyond all question. He was the son of Roger Baskerville, old Sir Charles's younger brother, who fled under a cloud to South America. Ah, and Mrs. Stapleton? She was a Costa Rican beauty by name Beryl Garcia. He stole some money, changed his name to Vandeleur, and brought her to England with him. And was his knowledge of Lepidoptera all a pretense? He seemed such an expert. No, that was the one true thing about him. The British Museum recognized him as an authority. Why, he even has a moth named after him. <laughs> the Vandeleur. Really? Tell me, where on earth did he find that fearsome hound? In London. He bought it from Ross and Mangles, the dealers in Fulham Road. He took it down by the North Devon line and walked it over the moor so as to get it home without exciting notice. Mm -hmm. But then one thing upset his plans. He had to decoy Sir Charles onto the moor at night, but his wife refused to help him. Threats and even, I'm sorry to say, blows failed to move her. So, as we know, he laid his plot with Mrs. Laura Lyons. But did neither of these ladies suspect anything? Probably both did. But they were both under his influence. And his main accomplice was a dumb animal who could never give him away. Indeed. Then your arrival on the scene, Sir Henry, brought him to London with his wife. He dared not leave her behind. Then she sent me that note of warning. Yes. I knew all along that it had been sent by a woman. How could you know that? Do you remember when I examined that piece of notepaper for watermarks? Yes. Yeah. In doing so, I was conscious of the scent known as white jessamine. It's very necessary for the criminal expert to be able to distinguish between the 75 perfumes. <laughs> Mr. Holmes, tell me, was Mrs. Stapleton in love with her husband? She certainly feared him. She may have loved him. The two are by no means incompatible. But on the day of the crisis, she turned against him. Well, now, gentlemen, may I suggest that for the rest of the evening, we turn our thoughts into more pleasant channels. <laughs> I have a box for Leigh Huguenot. Oh, have you heard the Doreski? No, no, I don't. Yes, perhaps we can stop at my senior. <laughs> traveled enough in your time to know that most traveler's checks are better than money, because if they're lost or stolen, you can easily get them replaced. But you should also know there is one traveler's check that's better than all the others, Barclays traveler's checks. Better because there's usually a fee or service charge, which must be paid when you purchase traveler's checks. But Barclays traveler's checks cost you nothing extra, no fee, no service charge, no commission. And to a traveler like you, that could come to quite a saving. And you get Barclays Traveler's Checks, of course, at the English bank with an American accent, Barclays Bank International. Like Barclays Traveler's Checks, Barclays Bank is known and respected the world over. Barclays' new full-service Chicago bank is only one of more than 5,000 Barclays offices around the world, dedicated to the financial freedom of people like you. So if you're planning a trip this summer... Stop first at Barclays for your free of commission Barclays Traveler's Checks. Barclays is located at 208 South LaSalle Street. Barclays Bank, Chicago, and the world. <laughs> The 
hound of the Baskervilles is one of the most famous of the stories of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And now you've heard part three, you know how it ended. My name in real life is Norman Shelley. My friend Carlton Hobbs played Sherlock Holmes, and I was Dr. Watson. Felix Felton wrote the script for this production by the BBC from London. And of course, I look forward to the pleasure of your company again very soon for more of the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. This concludes our three-part presentation of The Hound of the Baskervilles, and it also concludes...